Thanks so much for joining Goochland Baptist Church Online for worship this morning on this third Sunday of Advent. In the midst of all the uncertainty in our world right now, Advent invites us to prepare for Christmas by focusing on the things that matter most. And today, in our sermon series, Deck the Halls, we focus on joy. It's our prayer today that our time together leads you into the presence of Jesus Christ, and that in Him, you may find true joy. Thanks so much for worshiping with us. is it that the things that we expect to bring us the most joy rarely do? I mean, think about it. The internet, for example, was supposed to make our lives better. We've got more news than we can ever comprehend right at our fingertips. We can download movies and watch hit TV shows instantly on our cell phones. And social media keeps us more connected with our families, friends, and even long-lost classmates. And we've been in a long time. But as a society, we seem as unfulfilled as ever. And we can order just about anything we can imagine and have it delivered to our doorstep, sometimes within the hour. We have access to information that would have taken our grandparents a lifetime to find. We can FaceTime with family on the other side of the world. And yet it still seems like something is missing. The events of this past year, 2020, haven't helped us either. Many of us have forgotten the things that we've most looked forward to this year. Visits with our family, vacations, end-of-the-year bonuses. For many of us, 2020 has been a tough year. Really tough. When I was younger and things didn't work out the way I expected them to, my mother used to pull me aside and read me the book, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. And all the interruptions that we've faced this year made some of us feel like 2020 has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad year. I've been thinking about the Christmas story a lot lately, and I've been wondering if that's how Mary felt that day when God stormed into her life. Like any teenage girl engaged to be married today, Mary would have dreamt and dreamt of what her life would be like once she married Joseph. And then the angel Gabriel barged into her life uninvited, and he gave her some unsolicited news. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, Gabriel says. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. 
And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary asks, how will this be? And it's not that Mary's too young to know how things work. It's just the opposite. She knows precisely how things work. In Mary's day, you had to have a husband to have a child. I'm a virgin, Mary says. The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God, Gabriel tells her. What do you think went through Mary's mind as Gabriel spoke these words to her? Was she sitting there in disbelief? Was she thinking about the Son of God forming within her body for nine months? Was she thinking about Joseph, her betrothed, and wondering if he would believe her? Was she wondering about what her parents might say, or even worse, what the neighbors might say? Would people try to stone her? We don't know what Mary was thinking. We just know what she said. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Mary says to Gabriel. And then she runs. At least that's what we read in our text today. If you have your Bible, I invite you to turn with me to Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 55. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as, I, as, soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, and, but has li lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. As soon as the angel Gabriel leaves, Mary runs. She runs to see her cousin, Elizabeth, and she gets there huffing and puffing. But before she can explain a thing, Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, knows exactly what's happened. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Elizabeth exclaims. As I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And then something happens. Something comes over Mary. Gone is the timid, trembling teenage girl that we just saw. And in her place is a hopeful, confident, jubilant young woman singing to the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord, Mary exclaims, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation, she sings. Almost every word that Mary sings is a quotation from the Old Testament, a quotation that she and Elizabeth would have memorized as children. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He's filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary is singing for joy. She's quoting scripture. She's praising God. What's going on here? The Bible doesn't say exactly 
but I think it's obvious. Mary sings for joy because in the blink of an eye, things click. She understands what's happening in her life, that somehow God called her, a poor, anonymous girl, to be part of his grand plan to save the world. God has called her to be part of the answer for what she's prayed for her whole life. And now, Mary is completely on board. In effect, she said yes to God. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, a day when we celebrate God's gift of joy to the world. And I think that's worth some careful thought. Joy. When was the last time that you felt joy? Joy is one of those things that we all long for, but it's also one of the things that sometimes feels like it eludes us. Because the things that we expect to bring us joy rarely do. Maybe that's because we are confused about joy. I mean, the truth is, we confuse happiness and joy all the time. The church father, Augustine, explained it this way, we're happy when we enjoy creation, but we're joyful when we enjoy the creator. And too often, we find ourselves chasing happiness when what we really want is joy. Because the truth is, joy is not something that we can create or manufacture or even earn. Joy isn't something that can be bought with money. Joy is something that we receive. And if Mary's visit to Elizabeth gives us any clues about joy, it's this. Joy is something that we experience when we say yes to God. When we recognize what God is doing in our own lives and when we embrace it. Joy comes when we allow ourselves to be part of God's grand plans. When we look at the life in front of us and say yes to what God wants to do with us. When we do that, something clicks for us too. Like Mary, we know that we are where we're supposed to be, doing exactly what we're supposed to do. Perhaps this poor, young, teenage girl, Mary, is a model for all of us today. Because like Mary, many of us have experienced interruptions this year. Like Mary, our plans have changed in an instant. Like Mary, many of us feel uncertain about our future. But just like God had a message for Mary, God has a message for us. Do not be afraid. Because the truth is, just as God had a plan for Mary, God has a plan for each one of us. God wants to use us, each one of us, to make a difference. To be part of his master plan to redeem this world. To bring hope where there's none. To bring love where there's hatred. To bring purpose where there's confusion. What might God be calling you to right now? How has God equipped you? How might God want to use you to make this world look more like his kingdom? Every December, our culture invites us to prepare for Christmas by envisioning the most joyful celebrations we can imagine. Bountiful gifts, beautiful decorations, boundless food. But if Mary's story teaches us anything, it's... This, true joy doesn't come from anything that we make. True joy comes when we say yes to God's work in our lives. And that is the invitation of Advent this year. That in the midst of all the challenges of a pandemic, in the midst of all the pressures we feel from our families, in the midst of all the decorating and wrapping and baking, the invitation is for us to consider something that quite often we miss to consider what God is saying to us right now, to consider what God is calling us to do, to consider what it looks like for you to say yes to God this year. When you think about it, Mary didn't have to say yes to God. She didn't have to embrace the interruption in her life. I mean, she could have fought it. She could have said, but this isn't what I wanted, God. 
She could have just ignored God and pretended like she never heard them. And the truth is, we can do that too. But Mary did it because she trusted God. She trusted that God's plans were better than anything that she had planned for herself. She trusted that when God's story intersected her story, God would use her to change the world. And when Mary said yes to God, that is when she finds joy. A joy greater than any picture-perfect wedding would have ever offered. Because as bright as our dreams for man-made joy may seem, the Bible makes this clear. True joy doesn't come from anything that we plan or achieve. True joy comes when we say yes to God. May God give us all the strength to say yes to what he's doing in our lives. And may we all experience his joy this Christmas. Let's pray. Loving God, we confess that we are all on a quest to find joy, but that oftentimes we look for it in the wrong places. God, you are the author of joy. Open our eyes to what you're doing in our lives. Open our eyes to the ways you're working in our lives. Open our eyes to the things you want to do with us right now. And give us the courage to say yes. God, just as you used Mary, a lowly, poor, anonymous young woman, to change this world, we pray that you would use us and our lowly selves to help make our communities, our neighborhoods, our families look more like your kingdom. God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, and for the indescribable joy that he offers May we seek him this Advent. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, and thank you so much for worshiping with us online this morning. I wanted to take a quick moment to remind you of some of the things that we have going on in the coming week and the coming weeks ahead as we move into the, the Christmas season this year. Um, so this morning, uh, today, um, we will be continuing our collection of food items for Goochland Cares. And this week it's high in protein items. So things like peanut butter, um, canned meats, um, things like that. So things that are high in protein. Um, we are grateful that we are able to partner with Goochland Cares um, uh, this year and help out the community in need. Um, also on Christmas Eve, so on December 24th at 5 p.m., we'll be um, having our outdoor Christmas Eve service, so we look forward to look forward to seeing you there for our outdoor Christmas Eve service. Um, and also, students, this coming up Wednesday, um, we'll be continuing our student ministry gatherings on Wednesday nights at six p.m. in the multi-purpose room. We ask that you please bring your own Bible and a mask as well. Uh, we are so grateful for the ways that our church family has continued to give. Um, during these difficult times. Um, if you're looking for ways to give, we, uh, you can do that online. You can also uh, mail in your offering as well. And there's also a, a mail slot on the side door of the church office as well. Know that wherever you are this week, we are praying for you. Have a great week and God bless. <laughs>